Hey guys, welcome back. This is George. And in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to do a morph effect in Houdini. This time is going to be with curves and we're going to be using a set of curves doing a kind of a stack setup. And at the very end, we're going to add some nice, elegant bounciness to it. So it looks clean and simple. So we start with our shapes here. We imported our Alembic file, which came from cinema. And we got seven primitives in here, seven on all of them, points, primitives, vertices, and packed alembics are seven. And then what I have here is a null that's just going to separate uh, the connection line. So if I disconnect this um, and replace it with something else, it'll be easy to do. And so the setup that we're going to be looking at is this setup is very similar to the other video that we did. And what we're doing is we're transforming this down. It's too big. So if we look at our units, now it's it went from 150 and transform it down to about two meters. And we use uniform scale of 0 0.01. Then we're match sizing it so it's nice and centered on all axes. We're using a blast and delete non selected to select our shape. We are doing our first resample. That's going to be a reference link to the rest of the different setups. And then we're adding an adjusted resample just in case we need to count the number up a little bit. And then after that, we're converting, we're going from one primitive and we're using the convert line. And now we have 604 primitives. That same setup is replicated here. So if we look at our convert line, we got 605 points and 604 primitives. And in here we have 605 points, 604 primitives. So we're good to do the mixing now. So the first thing we did is we added a mops fall off. You could do any sort of type of fall off. Let's change the grid here, the grid color, so we could see. So right here, we're going from black. We have one keyframe here and another keyframe here, and we're blending that. So we're using the mops fall off here. We're, uh, match, we're match sizing it up a little bit. And then in here, we're adding a point VOP, which is the same setup that we had in our other video, where we just bring in the import point, and then we're mixing it and outputting it back to P. If we look at our setup, we could see that now we can see our morph in between the two shapes. And it's kind of harsh right now. So if I play back, it kind of, you know, it, it's very, it's very linear. So that's why at the end, we're going to add the spring so we can get some bounciness in there. Now, if you don't like the way this is blending, you see how the top piece here is pushing down. So this was something that was not shown in the video, but what you can do is get a sort and then get a shift, put the point sort to shift. Now, if you look at how the top piece goes down, maybe we want the top part of the next shape to be morphing into that. So what we can do is go in the in-between frame here. So we're here in the middle of the animation and we can use the sort and we can start shifting the points so we get the desired um, look there. So if I shift it, let's say 200 points, we could see that now it morphs in a different way. So we could get like a lot of different variations of this, but for now, this is kind of what we're doing here. All right, so we have the setup. This is pretty much it. And then this is then pushed and duplicated. So if we take a look at our next shape, so we'll take a look at the blast, it'll be easier. We got this shape here that then morphs into this one, then into this one, then this one, then this one, then this one, and then this one. So the only thing we've changed after this, after the duplication is of all the, of this whole stack here is that we're changing the blast to the different shapes. And then we're getting the same animation of the mobs fall off and we're just offsetting the keyframes. So now we have keyframes here for this one and this one's a little bit more offset and then this one over here. So what we end up with is right here. We start, we start our first shape, 
second, third, fourth, and so on. Now, this uh, Spring Solver, it's from AELib. You guys can take a look at the description below. I added the link in there. This is a nice collection of HCAs that Nick Taylor did. Um, he is from Head of 3D at Man vs. Machine. So really cool stuff here. Definitely download the HCAs. You got all this kind of stuff. So I would definitely recommend that um, additionally to installing mops. And I'll put the link for mops in the description as well. But yeah, so this one, if we take a look at the spring solver here, we got some stiffness and dampening settings. So now if I click on it here, let's rewind this. It's going a little bit slow because I'm actually also recording at the same time. So here's the first setup with the spring. And you can kind of see there's a little bit of bouncing here. So I filed cache this in here. So let's take a look at that. It's a little bit faster. And you see that there's like a slight bounce. Now I did a second spring and then this is what that one looks like. It gives it more like a floaty kind of effect. You could see it in, in the last one here. All right, and then I pretty much exported that out. And that's what uh, I sent to my friend Align over at Gamut. And uh, these other ones here are just testing the thickness of the, of the shapes of what that would look like. So I was messing around with the uh, round corners there. So yeah, this is the pretty much the setup. And uh, I was able to export this out. Uh, he was able to use this in cinema and do all the rendering, compositing, and all that stuff. So the final look, you can take a look at the website at mightnewtag.com. And there's kind of the whole video there. All right, guys, that was the setup. And thanks again for watching. Be sure to hit the like and subscribe button. And I'll see you guys on the next video.